Good morning, everyone. My heart is pumping, I think, uh, 1,000 per minute now. At, uh, please uh, bear with me. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, organizing committee for working around the clock to uh, pay for my passport, uh, my trip to here, because, uh, because uh, in Solomon Islands we have applications, maybe 5,000 sitting in the uh, immigration for the uh, seasonal workers to go. But uh, I thank God that I had made it here and thank uh, especially Emily. Uh, we had uh, the telecom for the first time this year, almost one week, the uh, submarine cable was uh, broken with uh, some news that uh, it was broken by a submarine. I don't know what happened. So I couldn't know that my passport was ready because I'm staying at the province where I couldn't know what is happening at the capital. But I made it here and uh, with due respect, I have to put back something out of this uh, conference bike. And uh, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge Cooper as well. Uh, we uh, knew each other four years through uh, his effort to find someone in the Solomon Islands making, doing bees and uh, not until last month he came and I put a face to a name. Thank you Dr. Cooper for uh, having me uh, be here. Uh, I have uh, two colleagues that came with me as well. Uh, Rodney, can you stand up? Rodney, uh, he is uh, working for CISBEG, acronym for Solomon Island uh, Small Business enterprises and they are very instrumental uh, doing training in the country and also the main supplier for bee equipment uh, in Solomon Islands and they have trained about uh, more than 500 uh, uh, new beekeepers in the country they based in Honiara and uh, gender uh, we have Esther Lodu from Custom Garden Esther can you stand up anyway she is uh, part Fijian, so don't speak Fijian to her because she will not uh, able to uh, reply to you, but thank you. She is a trainer for Custom Garden. They have a network of 800 farmers right around the country. And uh, Esther has been very instrumental in uh, training as well. And she is also a member of the organization which I'll be deliberating most in my presentation, Gizu Women in Business. Uh, she is also a member and come from the only island that entire island is Solomon Island that was organically certified under NASA uh, certification in 2017 and uh, now we'll go with the presentation if I go over time Emily you can uh, wave a flag Solomon Islands the uh, country's uh, profile uh, Solomon Islands overview for beekeepers in the uh, yet 1950s Europeans brought the bees and as, as I was looking through the presentations yesterday we were almost in the similar stage as how bees came into the Pacific and our original ones do actually come from New Zealand they kept these bees in their plantations Solomon Islands known for copra and when the traders came uh, they think that uh, beekeepers which induce uh, pollination of the uh, coconut so that may be one uh, reason why they keep the bees uh, in the plantation. In 1985, the first organized beekeepers association uh, began and uh, I was actually in uh, secondary school at that time and the first association was uh, formed. I was with that, the first training delivered by New Zealand uh, beekeepers that came uh, and I was the first uh, treasurer for Solomon Island Beekeepers Association. And thanks to uh, John, you were advocating for association. I believe in associations. Somebody had said, anything that has not worked in the past, it can still work today, only if the change comes within you. So I still believe associations and cooperative can rejuvenate in our context, despite where you stay. And Solomon Islands, uh, Honey Cooperative Association was formed in 1989. That is when uh, New Zealand had funded and we still have that uh, house. I've shown it to Kupa. That's the building we used to have our uh, uh, production and so forth. But now 
uh, Rodney's uh, group, CISBEC, is uh, taking over everything and being uh, privatized through a uh, dual uh, setup like uh, NGO, and at the same time, they have business arm within the NGO, which uh, Rodney is looking after, and it's working very well in that. So maybe we can match that uh, with the cooperative and association idea in here, John. In 1992, the Solomon Islands Ministry of Agriculture started beekeeping sections to help farmers. Now, if you ask me, Suti, when do we become a beekeeper? When I was 11 years old, I went to Sydney. I'm, I'm a sack worshiper previously. I come from an island called Laulasi, uh, artificial island in Malaita. And my people worship the sack. And I'm one, uh, but not now. Don't uh, be afraid of me, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went to Sydney. I don't know the year because I was, uh, I've, I've I lost my previous passport, but uh, it had some impact in my life today. I stayed in Sydney Harbour for six months because I'm uh, part of a movie called The Stalin of the Sea, documenting how our people worship and uh, fishing uh, our salt water uh, from background. And my friend had given me a very thick book about beekeeping. I lost it now, but I see pictures. I can't read. I don't know what was in the book, but I see pictures. And that's how I started. And when I went to school, 1985, I became the first student among the first two students in Solomon Islands to learn how to do beekeeping, because I'm a scout. And it has paid for my fare to attend one of the world jamboree uh, in Australia. And beekeeping in my life had paid for my fare. I managed the farm in uh, the school up until today. And I can comfortably say that Solomon Islands and believe with our participation, Rodney and Esther, that we come, even though the industry is think, is taught by the Ministry of Government, people in Solomon Islands, you talk to them, Cooper came and he asked one question, Suti, why are all these uh, boxes are discarded? And I said, the answer this time is Asian B, Asian B, Asian. Every flower in Honiara you go to is 100% invested with Asian B. You can't see any one single uh, Apis mellifera. And that is our situation today in the country. And everybody just lost interest. And I just thank uh, Rodney, despite of that, he is still continuing to arrange for trainings for uh, beekeeping. Give a clap for us. <laughs> Give a clap for Rodney. Because to me, I make a promise to my wife because she says, Suti, you say you are a bee expert. Now all the bees were dead because I was managing 300 hives on the island of uh, Esther, Esther Lodu there. My wife, had a program called Gizu Women in Business, and we've started with 10 hives, and we brought it over a period of less than six years to 300 hives on the organic island. And we had been, give a clap again. I don't put the figures in here, but in 19, uh, uh, sorry, 2017, 2018, we were producing around 1,800 liters in 2018, uh, 17, 2018, about 900 liters. And now as I can look back to the figures, the difference, it was when the Asian bees had increased to the island, although you will see in my presentations today, it had came through logging. I'm starting to take your time now, sorry, Al. Anyway, 1999, the honey industry had grown to over 500 beekeepers with 2,000 beehives, and mostly on Malaita, where Grodny and I come, uh, adjacent to Guadalcanal, where the uh, capital is. This hive produced about 75 metric tons, or 75,000 kilograms of honey, 
And sadly, as today, last year, Rodney recorded a, a probably around one, how many? Two, two ton. So it's significantly run down. It maybe is too small for you to say there, but the, those are areas where we have uh, the current uh, estimate of figures there. And one thing I would deeply hear bluntly that when uh, Cooper came and we went to the Ministry of Agriculture, we were talking with the director, do you have figures, data? And what he says, oh, you go to Rodney, saying you go to Rodney. And now Rodney is the... The, the, the beekeeping god in Solomon this time <laughs> because he keep all the data so we try to put something and these are data so currently now we have 253 farmers around Cooper you'll come and see them when we come for the next uh, visit and uh, 973 hives in most of the areas which are not invested with Asian bees so mangrove honey thank you Salote for the uh, a presentation yesterday uh, about branding mangrove honey. Uh, that is my wife there, Esther Talisuti. She's the founder and director of uh, Gizu Women in Business. And that hive there was has a small history. When I was keeping bees in secondary school uh, at St. Joseph's Tenaru Guadalcanal, 88, I, I graduated from the secondary school going on for further education. I took one box, so that's some 30 years back. I took that hive, brought it to my island. I was living on an artificial island in where I'm swimming with the sacks. And uh, I split, reached up around 10, and then I went, I'm a forester by background, so I stayed in uh, Kolobangara some days traveling. If you're traveling by boat, two days travel south, uh, towards Bougainville. And that's where I met my, my wife. She's from uh, Simbo. And I forgot all about the bees because I was working with forestry, BC, doing all this. And after 30 years, this bee here, despite the incursion of Asian bees, is one of the last bees still on the island. Give a clap for us again because this is where Solomon Island is going to revive from this beehive because what doctor said Suti you have some bees that have developed resistance to the Asian bees give a clap again because this is another one that is going to make the change in Solomon Islands already I was telling my friends when we were doing uh, the candles uh, at the value adding and I tell Atta and uh, Karen I say the, the candle that I make, I'll give it to my prime minister as an evidence that I'm graduating now from this work. This, uh, but I can't take them because uh, they won't allow me to take. But anyway, that is uh, Malaita, mangrove honey. And this is uh, one thing we have learned. 2012, I made a study, visibility study to Samoa, and I learned that Samoa... Uh, putting the hives under roof. And when I came, this is one thing I've learned. So we are doing uh, Pacific to Pacific connections. So I'm implementing it in one of those islands. And the entire island of Choizol, no one single hive in there. We have put more than 100 hives in my work. It's all wiped out when the industry came. So the whole island is zero again. And that is the island where the, the prime, current Prime Minister of Solomon Islands is. And him, he had about several hundreds back to zero two on this island because of logging. This was uh, supported by uh, RDP. And uh, it uh, was a uh, 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 partnership between all the uh, farmers, including Gizu Women in Business uh, and RDF I'm working for. We held this, and this is Rodney. You can see him standing at the back. I'm at the corner. Maybe I'm hiding. But we always integrate women, youth, everyone in a partner. So we always advocate for uh, gender equality. Although this island is a patrilineal 
system. And they are very strong in that, but we are trying to advocate for that. So I'm happy that in this uh, conference, we also respecting gender uh, balance in the uh, program. Uh, this is uh, my wife's uh, program on Kolo Bangara. We are teaching them. Uh, Rodney had given us tools. And my son, he is deaf, profoundly deaf, but he is the one that training the farmers how to build these boxes. He did his schooling at the uh, gospel school. He spent two years here. Uh, in 2014 and 15, he was here. And when he go by, that is what he was teaching. Uh, they are working for, my, for his mother as a trainee. Okay, so that is choice all. You see some honey there in the glory uh, the golden days. No longer now, no, no honey in choice all. And um, in 2012, this is uh, uh, in Samoa. I was there with uh, Lester Dean, a uh, worker. In 2000, we were trying to look for a business model. And that is where we got into Samoa women in business. And wonderfully, uh, Andy, the uh, uh, director at that time, she met my wife. And that is what we have carried with do the uh, house with the leaf touch in Choisol, and now we are using that in Solomon Islands. And I'm very surprised with how the honey there. Uh, Lester was very, very concerned. He said, Suti, you can't harvest this. It must be 100% sealed. And then I went back again 2018 as a collaboration. I, I learned from this uh, program, uh, Nick, from uh, Asia, yes, uh, Nick. Uh, he came and taught us how to do queen uh, cells by making wax. So I went and shared the idea with the salmons, uh, women in business. And uh, that is in, on, on uh, Savai. Uh, it was the uh, uh, Minister of Agriculture then at that time's farm. So he had about 10, and we harvested some honey about three big buckets of uh, uh, honey from his farm. And uh, average price for us in Solomon Islands this time, uh, where Rodney is doing selling as an outlet, uh, per liter is 300 SBD, Solomon Island dollars, and for kilo, 214 to farmers, and for retailer, it's around 500 per liter and 356. And, uh, Dr. Cooper will tell you how delicious the honey may be. I'm not campaigning here, but uh, it's, yeah, we have some honey. And uh, uh, there is no imported uh, honey at the, Sol the Solomon Island this time, even Aldrich Ration. Uh, John, it's not happening because very strong uh, uh, surveillance has been taking place. But we have an act, 1996, and uh, it is uh, helping the farmers. But now with the ACNB, this act is almost dominant now. So we go back, three of us will make sure we'll make use of this act that is uh, in the file somewhere in the parliament. Uh, main market outlets sits back, that is uh, Rodney's uh, organization, Gwibdi, my wife's uh, organization, Gisu Women in Business, Laho Honey from Ulawa, Hypochem, one of the Hypochem uh, pharmacies in Honiara, Plaza, Musiboko, and the bulk shop. There is big market. One bucket you bring into Honiara, they will just break it somewhere at the wharf because they are very desperate for it. 2017, Solomon Island, uh, sorry, uh, Gwibdi, uh, my wife's organization, and Lodu from that island, they have earned this uh, certificate from NASA, including honey uh, as one of the products for under this uh, certification. Um, 1917, Esther, my wife is there. She won the Central Bank Award for beekeeping because of uh, organics. Uh, give a clap for my wife as well. I'll tell her that the organization, uh, the conference had club. And today, she is using honey from my hive at my home, 30 years back, still producing, to make tonic drinks. Uh, because of organics, she is making. Uh, other products you will see here, but 
She's very creative. Next time, maybe she will come. She even went to Samoa on the uh, uh, forum, 19, uh, 2017, to showcase the Simbo uh, products, organic products, including honey in Samoa. And uh, this one, I asked uh, Rodney to come. Rodney, you just come, please. We have a few minutes for you. Just come. We want to hear your voice. Come. I'll just run through. Yeah. Give a clap for him. He don't want to come, but I'll give him this. Well, thank you, Shuti. Uh, I think just the opportunity for big uh, honey in the Solomon Islands. Uh, in 2018, I went to New Zealand and uh, PTNI, and I, a program Pacific Trade and Invest. And uh, I was uh, fortunate to have a, a talk with some of the buyers there. And they want our honey, especially all the Pacific Island honey. Uh, three buyers are interested to buy two chain supermarkets and one, uh, what you call, um, they, they only go for the expensive thing. Uh, so uh, they, ask that, they ask me if I can supply a consistent supply for two times a year, like a container. 40 foot or 20 foot, and I said, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> In the Pacific, it's hard, yeah, because uh, we don't do uh, bee farming commercially, yeah. Most of the farmers are doing it just uh, for their interest. Uh, subsistence uh, is also one of the uh, things the farmers do, their bee farming. Um, they only sell whatever they want to sell and keep most for themselves. <coughs> so this is uh, Rodney's uh, label. And we have our moisture content in the this year. The nearest we can get to, to the best is uh, 18. Maybe one batch was 17% uh, percent water content. But we are trying. We'll try to beat uh, New Guinea. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so this map here is very interesting. The legacy of uh, Asian bees into Solomon Islands, they are trying to justify, but it has came through logging. So these are the islands of, uh, yeah, I don't have a thing here, but uh, Malaita there is where Rodney and I came. Western province, that's where Esther and also my wife came, and I'm living in there now. We have Choizol up there, that is where the uh, Prime Minister's uh, island. The whole island contains maybe about 500 hives in the past. Today, as I'm speaking, nil. Uh, Isabel has in the past, today, nil. Uh, probably maybe one or two now, they tried, but it should die. Uh, Makira there has logging. I don't know about the figures there, but uh, they have one small island, which is our, uh, uh, what's this, hope this time called Ulawa, you see in there. It's part of, uh, yeah, so as uh, others had said, don't contaminate other islands. If you have some good uh, stock there, don't bring anything new into there. So thank you for that advice. We'll try to do that. And uh, Asian bees, they thought that it came to Guadalcanal by 2003. And uh, now from 2003, about 20 years down, almost Solomon Islands are big industry has all wiped out with the exceptions of the areas there. So we are hoping that we will have something. You see the red lines there? That is a logging roads on all the islands. So if I can go back to there, you see all the loggings in there, uh, except for the yellow one is the plantations. All the blue are the logging concessions. So it's confirmed by the red lines, almost all the islands, is red like that. And it's been a big uh, concern for us as beekeepers. Solomon Islands, the red line there shows the sustainable rate for cutting to export is around 250,000 cubic meters should be the sustainable rate. But since my glass can't read now, uh, 1995 to 2014, we had been along that blue line, it's seven to eight times unsustainable. And that's desperate of how we are looking for foreign uh, income. 
So the question is, what are we going to do? And that is why beekeeping is very important that we need to improve this. And I'll make sure I have the picture of my candle to show it to the Prime Minister when I go back. Apart from the destruction the Asian bees are doing, that is what has been happening in all the uh, concession areas. Uh, Savings Club, with the concept we have, gives you women in business, and uh, NRDF that I'm working with formally. Uh, we go to the island, we train the women, they make the honey, and part of the money is go into the uh, savings uh, box, and this is the kind of box you see. You see three locks there. All the three locks, three different women keep the three different keys, and the box is kept in a different house. So that one key you go and try to open, you can't. <laughs> and uh, opportunities that we have, uh, better local price, uh, better local market demand for honey, business employment training opportunities, space for competition for suppliers, decent climate and flora we have, despite the logging, but we have the concept of uh, floral. Yeah? You plant small flowers, they can uh, be the bee garden, and collaboration and exchange visits. So uh, put your hand if you want another conference like this. Okay, so my wife is very innovative. This is soap, virgin coconut oil. We are making them from the Women Partnership Program, and I'm the one grinding the coconut. And there, uh, so she makes soap. And I would like to thank Karen and uh, uh, the organizing committee for putting all this. When I go back, we'll put honey and uh, propolis. So, uh, Cooper just says, Suti, put some propolis because it's good antibiotic. Next time, Solomon soap will have honey and uh, propolis inside. In the next conference, when I come back, yeah? Okay, so opportunities is big. Uh, their marketing and outlet donors are willing to support despite the Asian bee. Pharma Plus is already coming to Gishu Woman and says, Suti, you uh, revitalize the symbols, honey. So there's some contract already so it's an opportunity and I'll give my candle and another opportunity again to him as well okay constraints the incursion of uh, Asian B lack of beekeeping knowledge and I would like to stress the lack of data I'll go back I'll make sure I'll go back to the PS of agriculture and I'll tell him kick this boss here no sleeping he must have a computer give him a laptop <laughs> Okay, so stakeholders again there, and thank you too much.